and uh, a good morning to everybody that has managed to log in. I'm looking forward to this meeting with you as we evaluate our year 2020. And as Janet has already mentioned, my name is Jesse Ainebiona. I'm married. My wife is called Diana. Together we have two girls, Ruby, who is making four in a month's time, and Moriah, who is one and a half. I started this business as a student when I had just gone to the university to study mechanical engineering. And that is how I got fueled up to start the business because the course I was doing was a government-sponsored program, but I did not quite see myself doing it for the long haul. So I decided to do this business as a backup. And within a short time, my business was picking up. It was earning me more money than a student would have ever imagined to earn. I was able to buy myself a car when I was in second year. I had started buying properties. By the time I was in my third year, I began to travel the world. By the time I graduated, I realized this is the business that I was going to do for the rest of my life. I have never looked back. Among the many things that this business has given me is the opportunity to grow as a person, the opportunity to help many other people, the opportunity to travel, but also the opportunity to be the boss of my own, having the freedom of time and the freedom of finances to do the things that I want to do when I want to do them. And the beauty about this business is that it, is, it does not discriminate. Whatever one has achieved, you too can achieve. But it begins with you making that decision. It begins with you making that choice. Because in this business, success does not come by chance. It comes by choice. And that is the purpose of today's meeting. So let me just pick up my slides right away. Great. So that is our lineup for today. We are going to be looking at two things. And uh, I will request that you have a notebook and pen with you in case just to be sure that uh, we are going to move together because at some point, a lot of this is going to be reflective. So I would kindly ask that you get a notebook and pen or a pencil and paper so that you can write down something. At some point, we shall begin to reflect. We shall begin to evaluate ourselves. We, be, we shall begin to write down something. So if you don't have somewhere to write, it will be not the best use of your time. So kindly get a notebook and a pen so that we can make the best use of our time together. And let me also stop sharing my video so that I can have a better connection. So get a notebook and pen and then we get ourselves going. Great, let's look back in gratitude. And the first place we want to see is, what are you most grateful for this year in your personal life? Write down something in your notebook or on your paper. What are you most grateful for this year in your personal life? Okay. You may not write down many things. One or two is enough or three, but just take some time and think. You know, the most important thing here is for us to, for us to jog our memory and look back and look at some of the things that we are grateful for. One of the songs that I enjoy singing is the song that says, count your blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what God has done. Yes, it has been a tough year, but if you take time to list down some of the things that God has done for you this year or that have happened in your life this year, you'll be amazed at how far God has brought you. So look back in gratitude. What are you most grateful for this year in your personal life? The second thing I want to ask you, is what was your greatest achievement in your business? What was your greatest achievement in your business? Hope we are writing. Hope we are thinking. Hope we are looking back. Hope we are reflecting. Because then that, this session will make sense for you. So let's take some time to look back in gratitude. But as we also do that, as we pause and look back, I would also like to draw your attention to some specific areas in our business. This year, ask yourself, how have you done with using the products? In fact, if I could ask you like right now, I'm sure most of us are in our homes, okay? Most of us, it's Saturday morning, so surely. Which products do you have in your house right now? Or which products have you used this year? How have you done in this area? Whenever I share my story, I talk about the fact that the five months, the first five months of my business were really slow. In fact, nothing much happened. And it was largely because I was not using the products. 
And I just want to tell you, in case you're new to the business, that this is not a business of going out there to find customers. It's a business where you begin by using the products. Because I remember when I had just started the business, I didn't think I really, you know, I downplayed this part. I must confess, I, I didn't take it that serious. I thought the business was more to do with getting customers and getting people into the business. And so I jumped to this bit. And I can tell you for the first five months, I hardly achieved anything in the business. But I still remember that when I got money and bought those first products, I remember my first set of products to use were the cleaning products. I always say that the products not only worked for me, they also worked on my attitude. So these products, the moment I began to use them, that's when my mind opened, that's when I began to realize that indeed these products say what we, what we say they do. And I remember after the one month after using the products, I got five people started in the business, I built a customer base, I made my first step to manager and the rest is history. So it all began, my breakthrough in the business began by using the products. And I want to believe that you're not, you're not any different. So how have you done with using the products? Ask yourself that. How have you done with sponsoring? When I say, how have you done with sponsoring? I mean, how many people have you sponsored this month, this year? And I'm sure with the back office, you can, you can be able to look back and maybe I would encourage you at the end of this program, at the end of this, uh, this, uh, this, this session, you can go into your back office and look at your history look at how many people have you sponsored this year how much personal volume have you generated as a result of you know building a customer base you know how have you done with building a customer base where are you currently are you would you say you're struggling would you say this is something you have mastered how are you doing in some of these areas just pause and look back you know i had a discussion with uh, someone in my business who opened up to me and said, you know what, Jesse, I still struggle with building a customer base. In fact, most of the personal PVs that I get, I buy them myself. So you know how you are in a position where maybe by end of by month end, you are like at 70 and then you buy the other 30. So that is where she was until we had the conversation. And then she shocked me two or three months later, she was doing 300 personal points, 500 personal points, you know, 800 personal points. So it, it's very important for you to assess where you are right now because I, I enjoy watching sports sometimes if you go to any any sport right now if there is a match and you go and and watch if the match has already started the first thing you ask normally is what is the score so in the same way it is good that before we look ahead we first look back and ask ourselves what is the score where am i right now what is happening in my life what is happening in my business so ask, ask yourself how are you doing with your customer base is it coming along well? Are you finding it easy to bring new customers? When it comes to customer base, there are three things that are important. One is your ability to get new customers. That is one. Two is your ability to retain the customers that you have. So repeat business. And then number three is your ability to get referrals. So in your notebook, ask yourself, how are you doing with getting new customers? Okay, that's part one. Part two, how are you doing with retaining your customers? In other words, buying again. Someone bought Super 10 this month, they buy NutriShake next month, maybe two months later, they buy Omega 3, and then maybe they buy Vita Squares. You know, repeat customers, resurfacing your customers, getting your, your customers to buy again. Because for me, that is one thing that has really, really helped me so much. If you have, it's much easier in, in business, it's much easier to find to, to, to maintain your customer than to get a new customer. Think about it. In fact, most times I say when you get a new customer, you don't make profit on that customer. You know why? Because by the time you get that customer, think about all the input you have made, the calls, the contact, the follow-ups, you know, you have literally put in so much that by the time you get the customer, probably the profit you think you have got has paid back everything you have invested in. The profit comes when you begin to generate repeat business. And then the third bit about the customer base is how are you doing with referrals? Are you asking for referrals? So that is something for you to think about as far as the customer base is concerned. And then ask yourself, the, third, the other thing that we talk about in business is personal development. How are you doing in your personal development? And I also want to emphasize that when we say personal development, we don't only mean how many books you're reading. Now, that's important. Recently, I had this conversation with a group of friends and we are talking about continuous learning versus continuous growth. 
And we agreed that, yes, it's possible to learn, but when you're not growing. Because the evidence of learning is when you apply what you learn. So take, for example, I have right, right here with me, I have a book, unfortunately, my video is off. I have a book called, uh, this is what? This is a book called uh, Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. This is a book about money. Now, if you read this book, and then after reading it, you read a very good book on finances like The Richest Man in Babylon. But after reading the book, you're not saving money, you're not budgeting, you're not keeping track of your expenses, then how different are you from someone who didn't read the book? Because it is said to know and not to do is not to know. Let me say that again. To know and not to do is not to know. When we talk about personal development, it's not only about the trainings, it's not only about it's not only about the books that you read, it's not only about the videos you watch, it's not only about the audios you listen to, it is more about what you do with what you have learned. That is personal development. Because if you read a book on leadership, specifically on character, and then you are still the same person who takes people's money and does not give them their products, does not give them their kids, then how good, what difference did the book make? So the thing about personal development is how are you applying the things you are learning in your personal life? Of course, for you to grow, it begins with learning, but it does not stop there. It goes into application because it is out of doing this, those things that we actually grow and become better. How are you doing in the area of personal development? Are you making a conscious, intentional and deliberate effort to learn and grow as a person? We shall move on to team development. How are you doing with developing your team? Why is it important for us to think about team development? I think it's important for us to think about team development because when you sponsor in, an, in, 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 I have personally come to this conclusion that sponsoring for me is not success. That, that's what I've decided, that sponsoring is just the beginning. I always look at it with, like with our two daughters, you know, giving birth for them to be born was just the first step. If I told you what we have had to go through, the immunization, buying of clothes, and you know these children grow quickly, now we are getting into paying fees, now that is the development. So sponsoring is like giving birth. You don't give birth and then you move on to the next baby. No, you give birth and then you look after. So if you have sponsored people this year, fantastic. That is a good place to start. How are you doing with looking after these people so that they can grow and succeed in the business? Because if you sponsor people every month and these people are nowhere to be seen, I'm not sure you're being productive. So how are you doing with the area of team development? Okay, let's move on. Where could you have done better? So in all these areas that we are looking at, where could you have done better? in the area of using the products, in the area of sponsoring, in the area of customer base, in the area of personal development, in the area of developing your team. Where could you have done better? It's important for us to think about these areas because this is where our business, this is our business, really. Look at those five areas. This is where you're paid, the money you're paid every month. That is why when your check comes out, the size of your check is determined by the size of how much you do these things. So I think it's a, good, it's a good time for us to pause and look back so that we can then chart the course and look, back and look forward in hope. So as we look back in gratitude, as we, look, as, as we evaluate ourselves, it's a good time for us also to look ahead and then ask ourselves, where, from where we are right now, how can we do better? So where are you heading in the year 2021? Where are you going? Would you say your answer is like one of those there, maybe over there? Far away, no idea. I have no clue. I don't even know. What I know is that we are getting into a new year. I'm not certain. You know, somewhere. Charlie Bolton you normally know, gives this example that you don't find a car on the road that is going anywhere. There is no car you find on the road that is going anywhere. Every car on the road is going somewhere. So I hope and pray that this session will help you to clarify your direction where you are going in the coming year. So where are you heading to? Because at the end of the day, if you fail to plan, you have planned. But what have you planned? You have planned to fail. This is very common and we say this all the time. But you know, some of these statements we mention so much that sometimes they become cliche. In other words, they lose their meaning. We, we, we say some of these things so much that we do not, they even lose the impact. They lose the power to impact us. 
So if we fail to plan, in a sense, you have planned to fail. And we're going to look at how, do, what exactly do we mean by planning? It begins with setting a goal, being very intentional about the things you want to achieve this year. What is a goal? A goal is something that you aspire to achieve in a specific period of time. Now, pay close attention to the word aspire. Something that you aspire, something that you want, something that you want to achieve. But it's not only something you want to achieve, it is something you want to achieve in a specific period of time. So that is why I would define the goal. Something that you aspire to achieve. So in this case, it is the things you want to achieve in the year 2021. And Zig Ziglar said something very profound. He says, you can't hit a target that you cannot see. And you cannot see a target you do not have. So in other words, for us to hit the target, first of all, we must have the target and then we can then aim at it so that we can hit it. So the question is, what target are we aiming at in the year 2021? You, because you cannot hit a target that you cannot see and then you cannot see a target that you do not have. So hope that at the end of this all, we can be able to clarify some targets that we want to achieve in the coming year. Now, without a goal, you drift along aimlessly. And this happens to us all the time, especially in our business. You know, it's so easy for you to still get results without a goal. It's, it's very possible. I, I like to give the example of this man who, you know, was called a village idiot. So this, these guys went for a certain project up out of town. And then after finishing it in the afternoon, while they were planning to come back, they, they had gunshots. And then they asked, what are those gunshots about? Then someone said, no, don't, don't worry. That, that is the village idiot. So they said, before we go back, let's go and see what this person is actually up to. What the person they call the village idiot. So they go and what they found is they found trees with, uh, you know, you know what they call the bull's eye, the, the dart, you know, where you draw these concentric circles. And then there is that hole in the middle where the bullet hits. So they found bullet holes right in the middle of those circles. In other words, the bullet holes were in the bull's eye. So they said, why do they call this man the village idiot? And yet he seems to hit his target. So they looked, they finally got, got to see where he was and they looked closely at what he was doing. So what he would do, he would get his gun and shoot at the tree. So the bullet would go and hit a, po a point on the tree. And then he would go with his markers and paint and he would begin to draw circles around the bullet. That is how it appeared like he was hitting his target. But you see, he was hitting a target which he didn't have. He was, he was first shooting, he was first aiming and hitting, and then he would go and hit the target. Now, what, what does, how does that relate to our business? If you don't have the goal, most likely you will just drift through the month and someone will call you, hello, do you have super 10? Yes, okay. How much? It is uh, so much. Okay, can you deliver? Yes. And then along the way, someone else asks, do you have omega-3? Yes. How much is it? So much. Okay, bring it to me. Then at the end of the month, you find yourself with 120 points, but it really, it's not like you were working for those points. Somehow you managed to get to them. And then with your team also, someone calls you and says, hello, I've heard about this business. I want to join. Somehow you find that you have sponsored one person or two, and then at the end of the month, you have maybe 4,000 points. Look, it's not like you aimed at 4,000. You just happened to get 4,000. It is so easy to settle for that kind of activity without a goal. You drift along aimlessly. The beauty about setting a goal is that it gives you the opportunity to make a deliberate intention about where you want your business to be. So let us make an intentional effort to set a goal. Also, without a goal, you settle for average or mediocre results. You know, what could have been 1,000 personal points ends up becoming 200. And you settle for that. Why? Because you didn't stretch yourself to make maybe a thousand points. So you, you without a goal, you, you just set off for average. You know, you set off for mediocre results where there is no vision that people perish. This is according to King Solomon in Proverbs 29 verse 18. It's a very interesting scripture because it says where there is no vision that people perish. Now, the question is, do we? does that mean that we perish in the literal sense of the word dying, like you fall down and de dead and stop breathing? Maybe not. What that actually means is that what perishes is your desire, you know, your enthusiasm, your passion, your energy, you know how you wake up in the morning. In fact, let me give you a very good example. Imagine you are going to take your first flight. I was going to make a statement, but maybe I will say if I was doing a research, I would find out that probably 
people hardly sleep on the night they are going to travel by air why because you are so excited you can't you don't even need an alarm to wake you up when you're going to make it to, when you're going to get on the plane for the first time imagine you have a plane a, a flight tomorrow at 9 a.m it is the first time in your life to get on an, aer an aeroplane you don't need an alarm to wake you up that night why because you are just excited that is what a vision does a vision gives you excitement it gives you enthusiasm it gives you energy it gives you passion now when you don't have that vision probably you on another day when you have nothing no flight zero that's why you, sometimes we need an alarm why because you know then you need you you don't have a strong reason to get up in the morning so if i could just use that example so what i'm literally saying is that when you don't have that clear goal that thing that tells you it is time for you to get up and go you you your energy goes i i still remember i was a senior manager and then the company had a golden jubilee celebration and i had really worked so hard to become a director but things had failed then the company put in place an incentive they said if you hit your goal become a world team member you will travel to london for the world team for the golden jubilee conference for free i said what you should have seen me i have never worked that hard in the business why because the vision was clear the energy was there, the passion, the drive, you don't need to be reminded. So without a goal, you just perish. You know, in fact, another version says, where there is no revelation, the people cast off restraint. Now, what is a restraint? A restraint is something that keeps you on track. It restrains you from going off track. Now, when you don't have a vision, those things that would have kept you on track are the ones you cast away. Very interesting way to look at it. So where there is no vision, the people perish. And remember, if you don't know where you're going, any road will lead you there we normally say this where if you don't know where you're headed then anything will come along and you'll just follow it you know it's like a dog chasing a car you know it, this one this car comes the dog chases them and then it realizes the car is too fast it cannot continue then another car comes it also chases it stops somewhere you will end up just headed anywhere and yet not getting somewhere so that is what can happen without a goal but remember that goals begin with dreams and I would like to encourage you, in case you have never done this exercise, take off time and do it because goals begins with dreams. So the first place is to take time to dream. Whenever people get started, we do this activity with them. What would you do if you knew it was impossible to fail? If God gave you a blank check and said, fill in anything you want to do, to be or to have, write down a hundred things that you would want to be, do or have. You know, think about it. If it was impossible to fail, if you could if you had all the money and all the time in the world you needed what would you do what would you aim at what would you want to have so i want to encourage you this is not the time to do this activity but in case you have never done this take some time and do it because one thing that this activity does it causes you to think you know you're going to write down about 10 and then you begin to ask yourself how what should i add then the more times you think about it the more ideas you get you realize that hey i've always wanted this write down anything look don't limit yourself when it comes to fantasies it's okay just write anything even if you say i want to go to mars it's okay people have been there you know the beauty about this activity is that whatever you write down someone has it so while for you, you think it's impossible someone is actually living that life right now so take some time to dream Dreams are the preview of life's coming attractions. In other words, if you want to see what is coming in your life, look at what is in your dreams. And then number three, remember that put your dreams in pictures. I have a dream chart where, and I always encourage everybody to have your chart of dreams. You know, it's so interesting. The current dream chart I have is something I put down in 2009. Then I just put pictures, you know. Today, when I look at that dream chart, 60% of those things have been achieved. So at times, you, you know, when you begin to put dreams in pictures, you begin to activate the creative process. And the creative process happens in three steps. The first step, it happens as an idea in the mind. The second point is when you put it on paper. So write it down or put it in your mind. And then the third step is when you begin to take the action on it. So I would like to continually encourage us, put your dreams in pictures. It will help a lot to crystallize what it is that you want to achieve. Moving on, remember that you must have long-term goals to keep you from being frustrated by short-term failures. Sometimes when, you, when your goals are clear, when your dreams are clear, it doesn't matter what happens in the present. 
you know, you must have long-term goals to keep you from being frustrated by short-term failures. The beauty about these goals is they keep you they keep you focused on what is coming ahead. So even if you trip and fall today, it doesn't matter because you know where you are headed. That is the beauty about having a goal. And also when we are setting these goals, remember that most people fail in life not because they aim too high and miss, but because they aim too low and hit. Many times we aim low. You know, maybe your goal is to become a director, you hit it, and then you achieve it. In fact, I, I just mentioned that and I realized something quite interesting. There is, a, there is an observation I made that many times when people achieve some big steps, you know, just hold, give me a second and I charge my laptop. Sorry. Yes, so many times when people achieve certain things, you realize that they, they probably settle. Maybe it has happened sometimes. Someone becomes a director and then after that, you wonder why they no longer have the vibe that they had. Maybe it is because their goal was to become a director and now they have arrived. So is it possible that you had a certain goal and because you have achieved it, now you have stopped, you know, that fighting power has gone? Probably. So many times people fail in life, not because they aim too high and miss, but, became, but because they aim too low and hit. So keep your eyes on the stars and your feet on the ground. Yes, keep your eyes on the stars. What does that mean? It means that you dream big. It means that you aim high. Yes, but keep your feet on the ground. And I'm coming to that very, very closely. I'm going to make that emphasis very clear. So as we do that, cultivate a healthy balance. What does that mean? Again, this is an opportunity for us to do some activity. So I would like us to draw that wheel of life, okay? If you are writing, draw that in your notebook or on your paper. So the wheel of life simply means that our lives are in different compartments. Right now, as you, as you sit here, as you're listening, there is a sense in which your life is defined by each of those areas. Your career, here it means your job, if you have a job, or your business. In this particular case, our new life business. Your financial aspect. You know, how are you doing with your finances that you are making? Do you feel like you're making progress financially? The spiritual aspect of your life. Then there is the physical. That means your physical health. The intellectual, that means your mind. You know, what are you reading? What are you learning? Are you growing? Personal development. Then your family, in case you're married or you have children, you have parents, you have siblings, that is your family. Then social is your friends or social causes in the community, like helping the needy. You know, whatever it is that you feel for you, this is what appeals to you. Your life is defined by each of those areas. And I'll also tell you as a matter of fact that if anything, if, if something in that wheel of life is not in order, you, you as a person, you cannot be happy. Take for example, imagine you have everything else and in your family you're struggling. Would you say that you're really happy? I'm not sure. Or you're social. You know, you have everything else done and then for some reason you don't have friends. You don't have people to do life with. You know, you don't have those people that you talk to. You don't have those people, the, those few people that you can pour yourself into. That is what they call the wheel of life. So we have some activity here. Draw the wheel of life in your book, on your paper. I hope you have done that. And then let us do some bit of um, analysis and we see where we are. So with the center of the wheel as zero and the outer edge as an ideal 10, rank your level of satisfaction with each life area by putting a star so here is an example okay so that is just an example you look at where this person is in terms of their career they are probably there somewhere maybe if this could be like a six maybe financial they are quite doing well this could be like an eight spiritual you think you can do better with connecting with your god physical are you resting enough are you eating well are you exercising are you supplementing intellectual are you making an effort to grow how many books are you reading maybe per month or how what effort are you making when did you last read a book or how what are you reading currently to help you to grow personally and then family how are you doing with your family do you take time to be with your husband with your wife you know are you so busy that you don't have time for your children do some of these things because it helps to know where you are so ask yourself where are you so that is our activity and that is an example so take some time to do it and see where you are currently. Okay, I would assume that we have made some progress. 
uh, a few reflections here is that the parameter now represents your wheel of life. So the, what you get after you have connected those dots. So for example, in this case, the green dots are now the wheel of life, your wheel of life. Now, how bumpy would that ride be if that was a real wheel? Is it possible for you to drive a car? In this case, the car of your life on that wheel, is it possible? Or you would probably be headed for an accident. So plan for a healthy balance in all areas of your life. I want to encourage you in all those areas. In fact, someone recently asked me, so what does that mean? What do the scores mean? The scores would mean two things. One, it would mean that, remember, we are ranking from zero up to 10. So what does that mean? That simply means that in any area, do your best. Do your best. Take, for example, financial. Yesterday, there is a team at Baden-Powell that came together to save money. Now, the first time I had this idea, I thought, okay, I'm already saving money elsewhere, but it would be good to be part of this group. So I began to save some money. Now, they save the minimum saving they make per week is 5,000 shillings, Uganda shillings, okay, not Kenya shillings. Now, 5,000 Uganda shillings is, is even less than $2. You understand? It's less than $2. So I decided to be part of that group. So every week we would save money. Now, later on, the lockdown happened. And uh, yes, the beauty about the group is that they were able to keep encouraging each other, keep on putting in your savings. Now, of course, while they save the minimum is less than $2, rarely do people save two dollars okay if you make a good profit and you make maybe ten dollars you'll put in if you make 15 you'll put in so as a, as a result the money kept on growing and yesterday was the day they came together to have a celebration to give out their savings to learn something about financial literacy that is something that you can also be able to do in your financial life so it is something that helps you to be intentional to be aware of where you are so that you can get better in the different areas of your life think about your spiritual so in each of these areas as you plan set some specific targets put in place some measurable metrics something standard something real something measurable something that you can do you know think about something that you can achieve something that is achievable something that is realistic then make it relevant because all these areas are relevant to your life okay and then let it be time bound let it have a frequency how often are you going to do this this is something general according to your life and lastly have some accountability i would encourage you to take off some time and do this i took off some time uh, with my wife we did this together to look at it from a family perspective you know how are we doing with our social who are our friends how are we doing with our finances you know are we saving are we investing are we diversifying our income the beauty about our business is that it's an opportunity for you to have multiple income streams and there are many ways you can do that you can earn incentives you can earn profit you can earn the sales volume bonus you can earn the step up all those are multiple incomes you know in the same business so physical how are you doing with your physical health what do you need to do better maybe you need to exercising more times per week you know intellectual what are you reading what how can you do better in this area so as you plan for the year ahead i would like to encourage you to make this a bit more real more realistic and be more intentional and deliberate as you do this and then as we move on this is perhaps one of the most important parts of this presentation identify your major goal for the year 2021 now i know we can have many goals and yes it's good to have goals in all those areas but what we are talking about is identify something major for the year 2021 and if you could reduce all your goals to one what would it be if you could crystallize all your goals into one if there was one thing they told you focus on this one thing for this whole year what would it be your major goal is the one that will probably affect all the other areas of your life it could be a financial goal maybe you're saying if i can increase my finances to a certain amount of money i will probably achieve 80 percent of all my goals maybe you want to pay education better education for your children you will have achieved that maybe you want to whatever it is ask yourself what is your major goal for the year because when you focus on many goals chances are you'll not achieve many but if you focus on one major it will help you to achieve it what do i mean your major goal should be big enough to excite you it should be something big maybe for you it is stepping up to the world team maybe it is stepping up to the president's team maybe whatever it is make it big enough to excite you that is your major goal it should be big enough to excite you 
Now, the next point is something that I would like you to be very cautious about. Many times we talk about have big goals. I want to juxtapose that with the second point and say, make it believable for you. Let me say it slowly. Make it big enough to excite you, but make it small enough to believe it. This is the point. Right now, if you are a senior manager, you're making 1,000 points with your team. And you set a goal that in the year 2021, I'm going to make 100,000 points. It's okay. It's big enough to excite you. The question is, do you believe it? If you believe it, it's okay. But if you don't believe it, that goal is actually going to demoralize you instead of motivate you. Now, that is the biggest challenge that most of us have. We, 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 like, and I will be talking about your resolutions coming after this slide. Many times we set goals that we want to be so big that is okay, but we do not realize how much they are actually damaging us. Instead of motivating us, they are demotivating us. I would encourage you, let your goal be big enough to excite you, but let it be believable. If your goal is to become a senior, if, you, if you're a senior manager right now, maybe for you right now, a believable goal might be to become a world team member. For starters, move from 1,000 points to 10,000 points. That's okay. If that is believable for you, that is okay. If it is too big for you, reduce it to a place where you can believe it. Because, like I said, it is possible to have a goal that every time you think about it, you lose energy. You, you know, you realize it's impossible. You are lying to yourself. It is like this woman who said, you know, for me, I believe that whatever is written in the Bible is true. So the woman says, I'm going to pray that that mountain moves from where it is to where it, I should want it to be. So she goes on her knees and she prays. She prays, she prays because she had read that faith moves mountains. So she wanted the mountain like Mount Kenya to move from where it is to come to Uganda. So when she opened her eyes, the mountain was still where it was. And then she said, her, I knew. I knew it wouldn't move. Now, where are you setting a goal which you also know you cannot achieve? You, you understand? So that's why I would ad advise you, let your goal be big enough to excite you, but let it be believable. Reduce it to a place where in your heart you believe, if I can work for this thing, I can achieve it. Why? Because when you achieve it, there is room for you to expand it. I hope that makes it clear. I hope it does not confuse. Let it cause you to stretch out of your comfort zone. That is your major goal. Let it stretch you out of your comfort zone. So there's a difference between resolutions and wishes. And I think most times when we go to set New Year resolutions, you're going to be hearing this in two weeks' time because two weeks' time, it will be New Year's Day. You're going to hear people say, my New Year resolution. What is a resolution? A resolution is a firm decision to do or not to do something. Other words that would sound with resolution are words like intention, resolve, decision, intent, aspiration, determine. Those are resolutions. Unfortunately, most times people do not set resolutions. What they do is that they set wishes. And this is a wish. A wish, according to the dictionary, a wish is something that you feel or express a strong desire or hope for something that cannot or probably will not happen. Unfortunately, most people settle for wishes instead of resolutions. I want to encourage you, let 2021 be a year where you set some firm resolutions. Some resolutions to say, I am going to do it. The people that came together at Baden Paul to save money, that was a resolution. It was not a wish. Because the, the, the resolution is tested when it is time to bring money. The fact that you can begin to take action on it means that it is a resolution. If you are not ready to do anything, then it's a wish. Remember, a wish is something that you feel a strong desire or hope for something that cannot or probably will not happen. Don't hope for things that will not happen. Firmly resolve and determine to do things that are in your power and capacity to start working on right here, right now. That is a resolution. So let me hope that we are not here for wishes, wishful thinking. We are here to set resolutions. Remember that. So a good goal gives you energy because at the end of the day, Tony Robbins says people are not lazy. They simply have important goals. That is goals that do not inspire them. Get someone who you think is lazy and give them something to die for. You will see another person. Why? Because now the goal has power. So in the same way, your major goal should be something that gives you energy. Let it give you the reason to wake up. Let it give you the reason to get up and talk to people. Let it be the reason you will wake up and make those calls, even if you don't want to. That is what I call by a goal. That is what I mean by a goal. A good goal gives you energy. 
That is a goal. That and is uh, a goal. Yeah. If I can give you a very small example, in my, you know, when, when the lockdown happened, I realized I needed to be online. So one of my goals was to come up with a YouTube channel. Now, this was not a fantasy. It was not a wish. It was a resolution. I made it a purpose. I will tell you there are days I would wake up and I don't feel like doing a weekly video, but I had to push myself. I had to come up with ideas. I had to learn how to do some basic video editing. I had to buy some equipment that could help me to put these videos together. That is a resolution. It is not a wish. A wish is saying, I wish I could do that. No, it's a resolution. A resolution says I am ready to do it and I am going to push myself until I do it. That is a resolution. I hope we are not going to make wishes. We are going to make resolutions. So the other bit about your major goal is that it helps you to reprogram your mind for goal achievement. And this is what I mean. This is something that Mike Van Deventer likes to take us through every time he comes. There is not a single time he has come that he has not shown us this, this picture. Now, our minds, we have what we call the conscious mind. Now, the conscious mind is something that, you know, you think about, like right now, all the things I'm talking about are going to your conscious mind. Those are the thoughts. But the more times you feel strong about something, the more you repeat it, the more you see it. And that is why I would encourage you, put your major goal where you can see it every day. If you put it near your bed, you put it near your bathroom mirror, you put it near your dressing mirror, you put it near your door, you have a goal card. Now it becomes so repeated, it becomes part of your, the subconscious mind. It, that now becomes your feeling. You know, it begins to influence the way you feel. Now, it is your feelings that get your body into action, and it is your body that generate the actions that produce results. So always remember that it always begins at a conscious level. The beauty about a major goal is that if you have one dominant major goal that you keep on thinking about, you're going to keep on impressing it in the subconscious mind. As a result, you'll begin to feel like, you know what, this is something that is so important to me. I have to get up. I have to do it. I have to do it. Because of that, you'll begin to take action. That's why it's good for you to have a goal that motivates you. And this gentleman called Andrew Carnegie says, any idea that is held in the mind that is emphasized, that is either feared or revered, will begin at once to clothe itself in the most convenient and appropriate form that it's available. There was a gentleman who came up with what he called the strangest secret. And people asked him, what is the strangest secret? The strangest secret was that you become what you think about most of the time. So if you keep on thinking about your world team step, you keep on thinking about your president's team step, whatever you keep thinking about, you will have it. So let your goal be something that dominates your thinking process, something that dominates your mind, because the more you think about it, the more you process it, the more you think about it, the more you think about it, the more you see people to talk to, the more you see people to talk to about the products, the more you see people talk to about the business, the more you post about it, the more you think about something, the more it is bound to happen. So have a goal. That's why it's good to have a major goal, because you cannot think about 10 things at the same time, but you can think about one major thing. So have a major goal, put it all over you, put it everywhere where put it in your phone put it everywhere so that the moment you see it that's what comes to your mind they say out of sight is out of mind so keep thinking about it keep looking at it it will cause you to take action i hope that makes it clear and of course when we have your major goal go and make it a smart goal you know make it specific make it measurable let it be achievable let it be realistic let it be relevant and most importantly have some timelines that you can attach to it now, as we begin to conclude, remember, it is said that when you commit your goals to paper, it increases the likelihood of achieving them by 1,000%. Just having your goals written down, the moment you take a pen, okay, it has been noted scientifically, psychologically, everything, and don't type it, write it with your, with your hand and pen, because it is said, when you hold your pen in your hand, there is a sense in which the nerves, everything connects with the central nervous system. There is something about writing down that makes your goals the, increase the likelihood of achieving them. So don't merely type them on your phone. Get a pen, get a paper, write down in ink on your paper. Move your hand across the paper as you write down your goal. It makes it more achievable. It makes it more realistic. Remember, we are human beings, not human doings. So what does that mean? It means that before we do, we must first be. And we all have what we call an internal programming system. And again, I will tell you this. This is why, again, New Year resolutions don't work. For most people, they say it is actually a research that was done and they showed that many times within two weeks to three weeks, that New Year fantasy, that flair, that vibe, that excitement goes off. 
by the end of January, people are where they are right now as we speak. Why? Because we have an internal programming system. What does this mean? It means we, we all have a certain way we, we, we think. And this is the thing. Right now, if you come up with a goal, okay, that will be in the conscious mind. But remember that your life is not governed by what happens in the conscious. It happens, it's governed by what happens in the subconscious. So if you get excited about your goals, they will only stop in the conscious mind. In order for you to change the way you operate, you have to change what happens at a subconscious level. We all have an autopilot. If you tell yourself, um, that's why in fact they say, gyms are full in the first maybe one week of the year because people say i this year i'm going to be healthy so guess what people are going to the gym people are going to the gym and then after one week after two weeks the internal system takes over but the internal system says we don't recognize going to the gym every week it's not part of us so that is why it's important that as you set your goals you must first be self-discipline because it is self-discipline that will carry you consistently again i will come back to the group the example of savings Initially, when the idea began, people were excited about it. People were giving money voluntarily. A time came when it became tough. That is where the self-discipline takes over. You're no longer in autopilot. You now have to make a deliberate, intentional effort to save that money. You, you might be talking to people because you're excited about the new year. What happens after two weeks when that excitement goes? You have to push yourself. That is what I mean by self-discipline. Self-discipline is the ability to make yourself do what you should do, when you should do it, whether you feel like it or not. Now, that is why many people have goals, but those goals never move from paper to action. Why? Because of lack of self-discipline. Self-discipline is the ability to make yourself. The key word there is make. You have to learn how to make yourself do things. You cannot depend on feelings. If all you do are the things you do when you feel like, let me tell you this, and I will tell you quite openly, you will not go far. If you only talk to people because you're in the mood, too bad for you. You will not go places. If you only use products because you feel like, there are times when, look, I have a tin of zinc here. There are times when I don't feel like swallowing this zinc, but I now recognize that, man, this product is good for my immunity. Whether I am in the mood of swallowing or I am not, I have to swallow. It's not about feelings. It's not about moods. It's not about how I feel. It's about I have to do it. Self-discipline is the ability to make yourself do what you should do when you should do it, whether you feel like it or not. How do you develop self-discipline? Remember, it is easier to act yourself into a feeling than to feel yourself into an action. R read that slowly. It is easier to act yourself into a feeling than to feel yourself into an action. Let's move forward. Motions are the precursors of emotions. Now, what does these two statements mean? Let me just give you a very simple example. Today is Saturday. Normally, that's when we clean up, you know, general cleaning at home. Now, there are times when I don't feel like cleaning the room. I don't feel like cleaning the bathroom. But, you know, I, I know that it has to be cleaned. Now, just because I don't feel like does not mean I shouldn't do it. Because I don't feel like I have learned how to manipulate my feelings. I have learned how to master my feelings. What do, what do I do? I get my super 10 and I spray on the floor. And then I get the bucket, I put in water mechanically, and then I begin to move the rug around the room. Now, because of that, guess what? The feelings begin to follow the actions. That's why I say it's easier to act yourself into a feeling. If you don't feel like washing, get your clothes, soak them in G1 laundry, and then mechanically begin to do the washing and the rinsing. Within no time, you will begin to feel like washing more. As a result, you'll end up washing even the clothes you hadn't planned to wash. Motions are the precursors of emotions. In other words, when you get into motion, the emotions will follow the motion. I hope that makes sense for you. So the whole point of this is become a master of your feelings. Become a master of your feelings. Don't let your goals depend on how you feel. Master your feelings. If it is time to talk to people, talk to people. If it is time to, you know, follow up your customers, whether you feel like or you don't feel like, get, let, let me tell you what I do. Sometimes when I don't feel like making those calls, I get a notebook. I write down the people I'm going to call. I get my phone, type the numbers, and I call the first person. When I call the first person, I talk to them. Hello, how are you doing? Great. How are you feeling? Good. Mm, I'm just calling you to check on you. How are the products I delivered to you three days ago? Oh, they are doing well. They are fantastic. In fact, my sister also needs. Can you imagine? Now, after you have made such a phone call, how do you tell me that you don't have the energy to call the next person? 
it all began with getting into motion. That is how you de develop self-discipline. So a few thoughts about self-discipline. It says, the pain of discipline weighs grams, but the pain of regret weighs tons. The pain of discipline weighs grams. In other words, making calls, yeah, it's not easy. It's not convenient. It may not be nice. It's not like you enjoy it. Yeah, it has some pain, but the pain weighs grams. But the pain of not doing it weighs much more. It weighs tons. Again, discipline is the bridge between goals and accomplishments. Whatever goals you have, the only difference between those goals and their accomplishment is discipline. I will tell you this. Many people set goals. Many people have wish, uh, resolutions. What we have known now are wishes. Many people have plans. But the only reason as to why many people never live to see these dreams come true is because of discipline. According to 1 Corinthians 9, 27, this is what Paul says. I discipline my body and make it my slave. What does that mean? If you don't feel like exercising, get on the floor, start doing the push-ups. As you begin to do one, two, three, you will get the momentum to do 10, to do 20. That's how I started. At the beginning of the lockdown, I think I was doing about 30 push-ups today. I can do 60 in one go. So it all came because I kept on beating myself, pushing myself, whether I feel like it or not. Learn how to master yourself, master your feelings, master yourself. In fact, there is nothing like time management. It is called self-management. Manage yourself. So to achieve your goals, remember, remove those mental roadblocks. Those things of saying, ha, I don't think I can do it. This thing is too difficult for me. No, remove those mental roadblocks. Many times we are the ones who stand in our own way. Then measure your progress regularly. Master the basics. You know, the basics of using the products, sharing your life. Those are the basics. And let me tell you something about this business. It does not matter how good you are as a presenter. It does not matter how good you are talking to people. What matters most is that you do it. Because the more you do it, the better you get. So master the basics and then manage your time well. This could be a whole session on how to manage time. But I will just tell you this for now. Manage your time well. And the best way to manage your time is to do fast things first. Do fast things first. If, if, if keep your business priority, you know, put God first. Keep your family second. Put your business third. Keep your priorities right. Don't do things, whenever you're doing something, ask yourself, is this the best use of my time? If you wake up in the morning and the first thing you do is you're just scrolling through on Facebook, is that the best use of your time? What are you supposed to be doing at a certain time? That's what I mean by managing your time well. And then do something daily. And most importantly, be persistent and be tenacious. What does that mean? It means that if you try something and it does not work, don't keep doing the same thing over and over and over again. But you can find a different approach to doing the same Thing. Because if you keep doing the same things, you'll keep getting the same results. But if you're talking to people in a certain way and people are just not responding, change the tactic and talk to them another style. You know, So whatever you do, be persistent, but also be tenacious. How do we take all this into application? I want to encourage you between now and the end of the year, take off some time. We took, my wife and I took off two days to just go and plan. So take off some time. Sit by yourself. Or sit with your partner, sit with your wife if you do the business together. Sit by yourself and take off time to plan. And then write down your plans. We've talked about this, that writing down increases the chances of achieving your goals by 1,000%. So sit down with yourself, have a meeting with yourself, and then you write down your thoughts, write down your plans. And then number three, use a diary. And many times we use a diary for the wrong reasons. I've seen people taking notes in diaries. Even right now as we speak, I'm sure there is someone who has a diary and is busy writing in it. That's okay. I will excuse you for now. But moving forward, get a notebook for notes and then use a diary to schedule events. And look, be so firm with yourself. When it comes to using a diary, use it for the right purpose. Put one-on-one -on, -one on this such and such a day. If someone else calls you for something else, tell them, I am already engaged. If the, it is time, we talked about the will of life. It is, if it is time for you and your wife, you say, time for me and Diana, that's my wife. If someone else says, come and we do this, tell them on this day, I am busy. However, we can do it on this other day. Use a diary to plan yourself. This is the only way you are going to keep your will of life in balance. Remember, if what gets scheduled is what gets done, put it in your diary. Put it in your diary. 
and then review your plans regularly. Time for your personal self. You know, take time to review. How are you doing at the end of January? How are you doing with your goal, the goal that you set for the month? How did you do with the goal that you set for the year? How, how are you doing with the goal for the quarter? Review your plans regularly. Plan your week ahead. I have found these things to be extremely helpful. So take some time to review yourself. So in conclusion, question for you is, are you in the way or you're on the way to your plan? There's a saying that, that goes that if there is no enemy within, the enemy outside can do us no harm. Many times it is us who get in the way of ourselves. I will tell you this, all of us here are capable of building the business. All of us are capable of going PT, going world team, going diamond. But many times we stand in our way. We keep asking ourselves, but ha, can I do it? The fact that it has been done before, it means that you can do it again. You can do it. If someone else has done it, you too can do it. The second thing is take a hundred percent responsibility for your plan, because if it is to be, it is up to me. Take responsibility, take responsibility. There is a law of leadership called the law of victory. And it says leaders make a way for things to happen. They always find a way, take responsibility, find a way, push yourself until that goal is achieved and that's why when you're setting it be careful not to set a goal that is too big and out of range that you just give up easily and say ah this one i know it can't be done S take some time and set your goal properly then take responsibility for it and last but not least do your best and let god do the rest and i'll leave you with that proverb from proverbs 16 3 it says commit your work to the lord and your plans will succeed commit your work to the lord whatever you do Ask God to bless it. You know, sometimes you just talk to people, but you have no clue where this could lead to. I, I, you know, there are people that I have sponsored this year, and if I told you how I met them, it's amazing. It's just amazing. You know, so do your best and let God do the rest. Commit your work to the Lord. Sometimes you talk to people and you have no clue where this could lead to. So commit your work to the Lord. And I believe God who has empowered anyone else to succeed will also empower you to succeed. So with that, I would like to ask you a few things. Write down in your notebook what has been your major highlight from this session. What do, what, what do you want to take away? So take some time and just write. Of all the things that have been spoken, I think we have been talking for the last, what, one hour now? Yes. What is your major highlight? What have you taken away? What have you carried away the most? Okay. The second thing I want to ask you, coming into the year 2021, what are you going to do differently? What are you going to do differently? How different will 2021 be, be from all the other years? Because there is a high chance that many times we settle for what we normally settle for. So how different, what are you going to do differently? Okay. The third question I'm going to ask you is what are you going to stop doing? And the last question I'll ask you is who will hold you accountable? Why do I talk about accountability? I talk about accountability because where there is no accountability, there is room for procrastination. If you set a goal right now, and that goal is between you and yourself, there is a high chance because no one else knows it apart from you. That one you will procrastinate because no one will call you out. No one will say, hey, how come you didn't do this? Because anyone, no one knows. So who is going to hold you accountable? Again, this group that of the savings, the, the savings team, that team held each other accountable. You know? There is a lot to learn from that small activity that they just did, you know, but it literally shows you that together, if we hold each other's hands, we can go all the way to success. So who is going to hold you accountable? If you say, I'm going to save money and it is difficult for you to save, sometimes you make good profit, but because you don't have a savings plan, you end up eating and, and consuming that profit. And yet you could have used it either to save it or to buy some products, but because you have no one to hold you accountable, it just goes to waste. You buy things that you shouldn't have bought. So who is going to hold you accountable in the year 2021? I just want to encourage you. The rest, the, 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 this coming year can, can be your best year. And I also want to always remind you that your best years are ahead of you. No matter how good your past has been, your best years lie ahead. So don't give up. I know this year has been different because everything had to move online and that's okay. It was a huge advantage in, 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 in some way because I mean, who would be here? We would never have had a training like this. So there are many opportunities that are coming in the year 2021. The 2020 has been a preparation. 2021 is the year of action. Let us not settle for wishful thinking. 
Let us not settle for what we hope we want to achieve. No, let us make some meaningful plans. Let us take some firm resolutions. Let us get into the air with unwavering determination so that we can achieve the goals that we want to achieve for the year 2021. So with that, I would like to leave you with this final statement that to be successful, you must be willing to do the things today others want to in order to have the things tomorrow others won't have again to be successful you must be willing to do the things today others won't do in order to have the things tomorrow that others won't have if there's anything to motivate you to sacrifice it is this because tomorrow when you're getting on the plane to czech republic it is because you did certain things that you, that others didn't do in order for you to achieve certain things that others won't have you have to separate yourself from the crowd do the things today others want to do in order to have the things tomorrow that others won't have with that i would like to thank you for your attention and i hope that has been helpful as you go to plan i want to still encourage you take off some time between now and the end of the year do this before you get into the new year excitement and the hype you start setting things that are not realistic set some time to sit down with yourself soberly and ask yourself looking at where i am today is it realistic that i can achieve this thing in 2021 yes set something that is good enough for you to believe but also good enough for you to, to be stretched